questions 35 and 36. Okay, so in this question we have a passage, a very short passage, but a beautiful flow chart uh, summarizing key energy transfer steps in the oxidation of glucose and ethanol. Wonderful, well said. But uh, what's not being said, which we can clearly see, is that this is glycolysis. It's the Krebs cycle. It's the electron transport chain. This is the uh, combustion of glucose and ethanol uh, producing waste products, carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide being blown off in our lungs and the water which is excreted in various ways including uh, urinary system and uh, the production of the beautiful short-term energy molecule ATP and Acer does have questions confirming that you understand that this is uh, the currency of short-term energy in the body and that energy is indeed stored in the bonds of ATP and can be um, uh, delivered or or, or uh, remitted or um, or provided for many energy processes, um, energy requiring processes in the in the body or in um, uh, life systems. Okay, so um, looking at uh, the uh, question, one of the things I couldn't help but to see is citrate. When you saw citrate, you should think of citric acid because citric acid is the uh, protonated form of citrate. So with the protons where you see those negative signs and you named it, you gave it the systematic name. Um, if you remember or if you did uh, look at the video for questions 8 and 10, I did a absolutely terrible drawing of citric acid and now you see it well drawn well <laughs> and uh, and so you can go to to that video to see uh, the name of it so Acer obviously draws uh, much uh, better than I and there you have citrate in a cycle with oxaloacetate uh, going back to citrate so you know what that is that's the famous citric acid cycle which is the Krebs cycle and of course there would never be an exam a question from Acer trying to see if you could name the cycle that's impossible but of course uh, having a little bit of familiarity allows you to uh, be a little bit comfortable with the changes that are taking place here so one of the changes that are taking place that will be more clear to you is you can count uh, the carbons on citrate count them and count the carbons on oxaloacetate and then you will see that uh, we have a six carbon compound citrate uh, which is should be expected and then a four carbon compound oxaloacetate and so two carbons have left the cycle and that's the two co2 so this also underlines the fact that there is no carbons um, being dealt with between ADP and ATP. There's no carbons being added. So that's uh, not a question. It's just the P. In fact, it's the first time I've ever seen uh, it written as ADP plus P. I've never seen this in my life. And in the Gold Standard Gamsat book, you won't see it written that way. You'll see it the standard way it's written in most textbooks, which is ADP plus PI because that little i is for inorganic phosphate. And so even in the statement that is standard in terms of the presentation of this reaction is a clarification that the only thing that is happening between ADP uh, to produce ATP is the addition of an inorganic phosphate. And of course, organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon. And so if you hear inorganic chemistry, uh, inorganic phosphate, that means surely the phosphate group has no carbon as you're going from ADP uh, plus uh, phosphate to ATP. So the CO2 that's being produced is uh, coming from elsewhere. It's coming from another uh, carbon source. And so you should go through the reaction and see where the, the, the phosphates are coming from and the carbons are coming from and so on and, and count them all up so everything looks nice and balanced. And the other thing you should also uh, uh, focus on uh, because 
in a different question, Acer would, uh, can ask this. Um, they've certainly done it before. Is the issue of redox, uh, reduction oxidation. You see this uh, reaction here, you see that this is being reduced. Uh, hydrogens are being added uh, to this, and that means that we're getting some oxidation going on here as this is being reduced. So this is, um, uh, you know, in general chemistry, uh, you, you may have heard in some other videos that I've made that uh, in general chemistry, Leo is a jerk. <laughs> Leo is a jerk. So you, that's in um, uh, the book in chapter 10 of general chemistry. And that is loss electrons oxidation is anode gain electrons reduction cathode. You see, in general chemistry, when you talk about reduction oxidation, uh, the focus is really about electrons, adding electrons, losing electrons. But in organic chemistry, uh, when you talk about reduction, it's the adding of hydrogens or loss of oxygens. So reduction is adding hydrogen or loss of loss of oxygens. So you can see this in, in the book in, um, in chapter six, I think it is, yeah, on with the alcohols. And it shows you a classic redox uh, system for uh, organic chemistry. And so oxidation, on the other hand, is either adding oxygen or removing hydrogens. So oxygen, oxidation is adding oxygens or removing hydrogens. So these just some perspective and these issues can come up um, for other exams. Now moving to the question 35, which of glucose, oxaloacetate, NADH, if labeled with carbon 13 would result in the production of carbon 13 labeled ATP? Well, uh, uh, first of all, the easy answer. <laughs> None, <laughs> because uh, it's only inorganic phosphate that's being added to AT ADP to produce ATP. And so there's no carbon in inorganic phosphate. So that's one issue. Uh, the other issue, I just want you to make sure that you understand that the idea of labeling, sometimes Acer might uh, just use, and you've seen it before in this test, uh, R2, R1, R2, R3 to label an R group as you go through a reaction. And in other exams, they've used R prime, R double prime, R triple prime to label it so that you can follow it during your reactions. But also in practice, in, in, in medicine and uh, in science in general, um, certain atoms can be labeled. Um, and these are usually isotopically labeled, it meaning it's an isotope. So if you want to read about isotopes, it's in uh, Physics Chapter 12. And uh, the, here you can have oxygen or carbon or, or, or f a fluorine uh, labeled isotopically. So th these could be radio labels, radioactive uh, labels. And this allows it to be uh, m more easily follow it, where does the that atom go in the reaction and then uh, you can follow where it was observed uh, to enter uh, one molecule or a type of molecule something like that so that was the real purpose of uh, that question now for for ATP I, I just want to show you uh, the, the molecule because uh, this is in what where is it it's from biology no it's from organic chemistry chapter 12 and in organic chemistry chapter 12 in the um, book uh, you can see um, that uh, adenosine uh, diphosphate so adenosine so we are talking about a nucleoside triphosphate or a nucleotide is a simpler way to say it and you know nucleotides are the building blocks for DNA and RNA um, so nucleotides uh, modified form is used as the short-term um, part of uh, uh, energy for the cell. So we have uh, aden adenine, which is a uh, nitrogen base. Ribose with it is a sugar. You should recognize that because it ends in O's, like fructose, galactose, sucrose. Uh, they end in O's, so those are sugars, and, um, and diphosphate. And so uh, obviously in the answer choices we had, we didn't have ribose <laughs> as a possibility. And plus, there's nowhere in the reaction that we were provided where it shows ADP being produced. 
because you would have to show ADP being produced and then you can have a carbon uh, source for ADP being produced if you showed ribose or adenine being produced but that wasn't the case it was just a case of ADP which you see here adenosine uh, uh, diphosphate adding inorganic phosphate as you see there's no carbons in inorganic phosphate and this requires energy so energy is required to make ATP because when ATP hydrolyzes uh, it releases energy and so you can see the ATP molecule and also the 3d version uh, above and you can also see the ATP molecule uh, below here um, with the three phosphate groups on the left and the ribose sugar which is a far five carbon uh, sugar and then uh, to the far right of the molecule you see the nitrogen base so you see it's uh, quite a, a nitrogen uh, quite a few nitrogen atoms uh, in that base. Okay, so moving on to question 36. How many moles uh, ethanol needed to produce as much ATP would be produced by one mole of glucose? So we need one mole of glucose. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just take inventory as to what's going on. Just very careful inventory. So you want to do this clean and neat create a little table or something, uh, find a little empty space. Uh, there is space uh, on uh, page 56 uh, or at the, uh, page 57. So create a little space, create a little table, and be very efficient. Be clean. Don't, don't get all messy. I've seen some students <laughs> get really messy during the exam, and so they start actually making mistakes just because of their messiness, not because of uh, a misunderstanding. So... Um, I'm going to start with uh, uh, glucose. So uh, for glucose, starting with half a mole of glucose, I see that the first thing that I note is uh, that we have some uh, uh, one NADH being produced when glucose goes to pyruvate. So I've got one NADH, and I have uh, two ATP uh, being produced. Uh, so one, two ATP. Uh, being produced with the half glucose. Okay, so that's between half glucose and pyruvate. Next, I get uh, one more NADH uh, being produced uh, between pyruvate and acetate. Oh, and there you have acetate. Eh? Very good um, <laughs> if, that you see acetate because uh, uh, acers acid and other exams, propyl bromo acetate, and you had to draw it. So you should be able to draw propyl bromo acetate uh, now. And if you don't, you should look up uh, esters uh, in, in, in the book or online so that you know how to name esters because uh, that's important. But it's nice for you to see acetate. It's also called ethanoate because it has two carbons. Okay, and then acetyl uh, coenzyme A, and then we go to citrate. And then uh, when citrate is going to oxaloacetate, we get uh, three NADHs. So I'm going to go one, two, three NADHs. And um, also there's an ATP being produced. So there's an ATP. Uh, being produced. Okay, so what's my total? I have 3 ATP, I have 5 NADH, and um, when you look at the bottom left of the uh, diagram, which of course if you study biomed or if you're into physiology or biochemistry you would know this already, um, but you see that uh, NADH, one NADH molecule is uh, producing 3 ATP. So uh, we get uh, one NADH uh, for three ATP is what we learn from looking at the bottom left of the diagram. Of course, water is also being produced, waste product of uh, metabolism. But um, so we, we have that conversion of NADH. So now we know we get three more ATP uh, per NADH. I already have 5 here, so I have 3 times 5, that's 15, plus 3 here, that's 18. So I have 18 ATP um, for half a mole of glucose, and that means uh, 36 ATP, which also uh, some biochemistry students will giggle when they see that because uh, they would have um, thought that uh, from the outset, more or less.
but you know there's inefficiencies and other details, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, this is a very uh, commonly used uh, number. But it doesn't mean that having a biochemistry background would get this uh, correct because Acer sets a little bit of a trap here uh, by the wording of their questions, which will catch some uh, science students where um, some perhaps some non-science students will just go by the book. And so just trying to uh, reveal what's present. And so ETOH, which is ethanol, following that, I see uh, from ethanol to ethanol, as, as you see, it's an aldehyde, so it ends in al. Um, I see there's one NADH. And then from ethanol to acetate, I see there's one NADH. And then acetate, acetyl uh, coenzyme A into citrate. And then we have the routine that happened previously, which was uh, one ATP and then three NADH. One, two, three NADH. Okay, so what's my total here? Um, I have three times uh, five. Uh, that's going to give me uh, 15 plus one more, so that's 16. So uh, I have ETO, I, well, I should have written it the other way, just to be consistent, 16 ATP uh, for ETOH, and that's one mole. So what did I find? I found that um, one mole of ETOH can give you uh, and more than twice you get from glucose, but less than three times, or as Acer would uh, say, less than four times. So that means that the answer is C. 36 is C. 36 and 36 ATP for C. Okay, oh boy. Uh, it's been a long day. So I... I would uh, say that, uh, you know, some students might have memorized or, or misinterpreted the question as glycolysis, which has a smaller amount of ATP being produced and then thought that it's more than four. <laughs> but that's a uh, misinterpretation because this is looking at the oxidation of uh, ethanol. Um, so uh, this is very different. And so in the book, uh, you can get some more information by going to uh, org 12.5, which um, I showed you, you know, the phosphate group of ATP, you know, making that very clear. And uh, some nucleotides in bio 1.2.2 and um, metabolism, cellular metabolism, 4.4 .4 to 4.10. And I have to say, I know a lot of students, they find those chapters very very difficult with metabolism. Don't read it like you have to memorize it, because obviously you wouldn't have needed to for this question. Read it like a story. Follow the carbons. Follow the uh, oxidation, the reduction, um, just things like that, so that you look at the arrows and, and you get a sense of um, flow charts and metabolism, and then you just do practice questions.